Welcome back, welcome back, any and all. Glad you all could come back to hear the word. Not only hear the word, but be doers of the word. Glory be to a higher. I sure hope when you woke up this morning, you told Father God, thank you. It is he that woke us up. We didn't wake ourselves up. No, we can't do that. We can't even breathe on our own, believe it or not. And I sure hope you told your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Today, we're still in the book of Matthew. We are now on chapter 21, Jesus Enters Jerusalem. Before we begin our reading, are you guys saved? Have you been baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins? Are you living a holy life, a righteous life? Do you have that personal relationship with the Father? Because that's what he's seeking from each and every one of us. You need to know and hear his voice. You need to know him when he's speaking to you. Hear him when he's speaking to you so you can be obedient to his will, right? You need to live a life of daily repentance because we live in these fleshly bodies and the flesh is always warring with the spirit, right? You need to read God's word, preferably the King James Version of the Bible. Go down on your knees in prayer and cry out to the Father in sincerity and truth. Don't stop crying out to him until you hear from him. He will not only answer you, but he'll begin to teach you the word of God. He teaches me. He's, he's taught me and he's continually teaching me because he that had begun a good work will not stop to the day of Christ's coming. That's right. And you know, he said Jesus was perfected by the sufferings that he went through. So don't tell me that you don't want to suffer. You, you can't suffer and you don't want to suffer because we won't suffer through not, not near what Jesus did for us. Okay. The suffering he did for us. So don't murmur and complain. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. All right. We are overcomers through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. But that being said, we're going to say a prayer now. I always tell you the truth. I tell you the truth because I love you and Father God loves you more. We are now going to say a prayer for children all, all ages and then we're going to get right into our reading. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you today to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your protection, my Father. Thank you for waking us up this morning and providing for us every day, Lord. Thank you, Father, for our parents. We love them. Thank you, Father, for teaching us to treat others the way that we want to be treated with love and respect. And we love you, my Father. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Amen indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 21. Jesus enters Jerusalem. When Jesus and his disciples came near Jerusalem, he went to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives and sent two of them on ahead. He told them, go into the next village where you will, find, you will at once find the donkey and her colt. Untie the two donkeys and bring them to me. If anyone asks you why you are doing that, just say, the Lord needs them. Right away he will let you have the donkeys. So God's promise came true, just as the prophet had said. Announce to the people of Jerusalem, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey. He comes on the colt of a donkey. The disciples left and did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and his colt and laid some clothes on their backs. Then Jesus got on. Many people spread clothes in the road while others put down branches while they had cut from trees, which they had cut from trees. Some people walked ahead of Jesus and others followed behind. They were all shouting, Hooray for the son of David! God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hooray for God in heaven above! When Jesus came to Jerusalem, everyone in the city was excited and asked, Who can this be? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus in the temple. Jesus went into the temple and chased out everyone who was selling or buying. He turned over the tables of the money changers and the benches of the ones who were selling doves. He told them, the scripture says, My house shall be called a place of worship, but you have turned it into a place where robbers hide. Blind and lame people came to Jerusalem in the temple, and he healed them. But the chief priests and the teachers of the law of Moses were angry when they saw his miracles and heard the children shouting praises to the son of David. The men said to Jesus, don't you hear what those children are saying? Yes, I do, Jesus answered. Don't you know that the scriptures say children and infants will sing praises? Then Jesus left the city and went out to the village of Bethany where he spent the night. Jesus puts a curse on a pig. On a, I'm sorry. Excuse me. The devil is a liar. Jesus puts a curse on a pig tree. <laughs> when Jesus got up the next morning, he was hungry. He started out for the city. And along the way, he saw a fig tree, 
But when he came to it, he found only leaves and no figs. So he told the tree, you will never again grow any fruit. Right then, the fig tree dried up. The disciples were shocked when they saw how quickly the tree had dried up. But Jesus said to them, if you have faith and don't doubt, I promise that you can do what I did to this tree. And you will be able to do even more. You can tell this mountain to get up and jump into the sea, and it will. If you have faith when you pray, you will, give, you will be given whatever you ask for. A question about Jesus' authority. Jesus had gone into the temple and was teaching when the chief priests and the leaders of the people came up to him. They asked him, what right do you have to do these things? Who gave you this authority? Jesus answered, I have just one question to ask you. If you answer it, I will tell you where I got the right to do these things. Who gave John the right to baptize? Was it God in heaven or merely some human being? They thought it over and said to each other, we can't say that God gave John this right. Jesus will ask us, why didn't we believe John? On the other hand, these people think that John was a prophet, and we are afraid of what they might do to us. That's why we can't say that it was merely some human who, who gave John the right to baptize. So they told Jesus, we don't know. Jesus said, then I won't tell you who gave me the right to do what I do. A story about two sons. Jesus said, I will tell you a story about a man who had two sons. Then you can tell me what you think. The father went to the oldest son and said, go work in the vineyard today. His son told him that he would not do it, but later he changed his mind and went. The man then told his younger son to go into the vineyard. The boy said he would, but he didn't go. Which one of the sons obeyed his father? The older one, the chief priest and leaders answered. Then Jesus told them, you can be sure that tax collectors and prostitutes will get into the kingdom of God before you ever will. Mm. When John the Baptist showed you how to do right, you would not believe him. But these evil people did believe. And even when you saw what they did, you still would not change your minds and believe. Renters of a Vineyard Jesus told the chief priests and leaders to listen to, us, to this story. A landowner once planted a vineyard. He built a wall around it and dug a pit to crush the grapes in. He also built a lookout tower. Then he rented out his vineyard and left the country. When it was harvest time, the owner sent some servants to get his share of the grapes. But the renters grabbed those servants. They beat one up, killed one, and stoned one of them to death. He then sent more servants than he did the first time. But the renters treated them in the same way. Finally, the owner sent his own son to the renters because he thought they would respect him. But when they saw this man's son, they said, someday he will own the vineyard. Let's kill him. Then we can have it all for ourselves. So they grabbed him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Jesus asked, when the owner of that vineyard comes, what do you suppose he will do to those renters? The chief priests and leaders answered, he will kill them in some horrible way. Then he will rent out his vineyard to people who will give him his share of grapes at harvest time. Jesus replied, you surely know that script that the scriptures say the stone that the builders tossed aside is now the most important stone of all. This is something the Lord has done, and it is amazing to us. I tell you that God's kingdom will be taken from you and given to people who will do what he demands. Anyone who stumbles over this stone will be crushed. And anyone who falls on, on it will be smashed to pieces. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard these stories, they knew that Jesus was talking about them. So they looked for a way to arrest Jesus. But they were afraid to because the people thought he was a prophet. <laughs> God's willing, tomorrow we come back again in the book of Matthew chapter 22. The Great Banquet. You all tell your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Tell them all about Father God who gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all our sins. He didn't die for one of some. He died for us all. So if you haven't given your life to Christ, I don't know who you're waiting for or who you're waiting for. Choose ye this day who you're going to serve. I tell you the truth because I love you and Father God loves you more. Father God says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. That's not something up for debate or discussion. It's something we all must do, so please do it. And if you have any unforgiveness in your heart, let it go. I say please let it go.
If you drop dead with that unforgiveness in your heart, you know where it's going to take you, right? You must forgive. Because if you don't forgive your father in heaven, not going to forgive you either. If you don't forgive your fellow man, I don't care who they are, what he or she has done. If you don't forgive them, your father not going to forgive you. And um, also, your prayers may be hindered. It is written. I tell you no lie. I love you all with the love of the Lord and Father God loves you more. You all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day. Children of all ages, youngest to oldest alike, God bless you. Bye-bye.